All right, we are watching the acre count. First alert, mm -hmm. meteorologist Paul Hagen is here. Paul, when we went on air, what, 90 minutes ago, we said, what, 80 acres, then it went to 100, now we're at 120 acres. That's really proof positive. The fire itself is only just over two hours old. We first saw oh. the first little plume of smoke going up around 335 this afternoon, and now it's up to 120 acres, and the fire crews are still trying to get as much of a handle on this before the sun goes down as they can. The smoke plume is actually visible from space. That white blotch right there, that is the smoke plume from the old fire in Napa County. There is absolutely no cloud cover visibility across the Bay Area. That's it in terms of what you're seeing in the sky. So if you look to the north and see kind of some hazy clouds, that's the smoke that once it makes its way into the upper levels of the atmosphere, the wind changes direction and it's being blown back down to the south towards the north end of the bay itself. We'll keep an eye on the air quality in case that deteriorates. We want to check on what the conditions are like around the fire itself. Temperature stands around 80 degrees as it continues to burn uphill. This is to the north of Napa and it's to the east of Silverado Trail. It's to the east of California Highway 29. The humidity only around 20 percent. The winds at ground level blowing south to north, so that's the direction the fire is growing. But you get into the higher elevations and at flight level for the tanker crews trying to suppress this fire, the winds are actually out of the north. So that's why the smoke plume is blowing in that direction and it's why it's an extra challenging environment for the fire crews as they try to keep this from growing any further. High pressure still in control of our weather tomorrow. So a similar weather pattern. Temperatures are going to be well above average inland, but we do have some changes later on this week. The high pressure slides away. It's going to get a cooling trend with a stronger onshore breeze. Cooler temperatures means higher humidity levels. That definitely helps in terms of the fire threat. And this storm system, as it makes its way towards the coast over the weekend, is going to try to send a chance of showers into the Bay Area Saturday night into Sunday. It is not a guarantee of rain. We're talking about early June. Nothing is guaranteed in terms of moisture from the atmosphere, but it's a pretty good chance Saturday night into Sunday. The best chance of measurable rain is going to be along the coast and north of the Golden Gate. Futurecast keeps some areas pretty much shut out as you go farther inland in the East Bay. San Jose, if you get anything more than a trace, I will be shocked. I'll be pleasantly shocked, but odds are that the Santa Cruz Mountains, that rain shadow is going to keep you below a trace of rainfall but maybe approaching a tenth of an inch of rain for some of the higher elevations of the North Bay. We will take every drop, even if it helps to limit the fire threat for a day. We will definitely take it with record dry fire fuels across so much of the Bay Area. High temperatures today, well, they were warm inland, further cooking those fire fuels. Into the upper 80s for Santa Rosa and Concord, low 80s in San Jose. Mid-70s for Fremont, and temperatures were a little cooler around the bay and along the coast. Only low 60s for high temperatures in Pacifica. Right now, we have a mix of 60s, 70s, 80s, and 90s, the usual spread for the last day of May. 61 degrees at Half Moon Bay, still 92 degrees in Fairfield right now, and it's still 83 degrees in Napa. Another one of those factors the fire crews have to contend with. It's not flat out hot but it's very warm, especially when you're wearing all of that protective equipment. Temperatures are going to drop later on tonight, so that's good news. As the temperatures drop, the humidity levels go up. We're going to see the onshore breeze trying to return, bringing a little bit of additional moisture. Again, we'll take what we can get. Temperatures bottoming out in the upper 40s and low 50s, and then highs tomorrow, they're still going to be above normal for most of us, except along the coast, stopping out just above 60 degrees there. Mid to upper 70s to around 80 degrees down the peninsula and around the south end of the bay. Mid 80s for the Santa Clara Valley up to 85 in San Jose. Mid 80s in the Tri-Valley, a little hotter for Concord and Pleasant Hill in the upper 80s and at or above 90 as you go into the delta and east of Mount Diablo. Low 90s there for the hot spots around the entire region. Upper 60s in San Francisco, low 70s for Oakland and the East Bay, just a couple degrees above average. Low 80s giving way to mid to even upper 80s as you go farther inland in the North Bay, close to 90 degrees in Santa Rosa and into the upper 80s for for Sonoma and Napa and at or above 90 degrees for Cloverdale, Windsor and St. Helena as well. Another hot day tomorrow, but then temperatures start to back down on Thursday, a trend that continues on Friday. And by the weekend, we're going to see more clouds and sunshine and below average temperatures, even inland. And there's that chance of rain showers late Saturday night into Sunday. Not a guarantee of rain, but at least it's a decent chance. We'll take what we can get as we head into the month of June. Once that moves out, temperatures start to go back up into the 80s inland by Monday and Tuesday.